Hello everyone, today we have a super exciting guest because we're interviewing Chloe Rebellion. Now Chloe started at the Paris Opera Ballet School before going to the Royal Ballet School and then subsequently going back to Paris and working with the Paris Opera Ballet. Then after doing the successful Grand Audition, where you audition for many ballet companies, she became the first French dancer to be accepted at the Marinsky Theatre in St. Petersburg. She's danced many soloist roles and now has moved to Amsterdam, dancing with the Dutch National Ballet. And I think it's so interesting to hear from this dancer and hear about her journey with all these renowned, world-class companies. So let's meet Chloe. Some days I would arrive at Royal, the doors were not even open, so I could do this and do that. And yeah, I was really dedicated for this, you can say. <laughs> and they were like, oh, there is this grand edition thing, maybe you should give it a go. You know what? I don't want to do anything, but I'm just going to sign up and I'll just wear a solo and yeah, put it on stage. So off I go to Barcelona, I have new expectations. I walk out of there and I have all the contracts, every single company. And I'm like, um, this is not part of the plan. <laughs> they ask me what you do and I was like, oh, I'm going to Marinsky. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so COVID happened, nothing was happening in Russia, but uh, everywhere in the world, the world was shutting down and we were keep on working. I had to have my debut as Sleeping Beauty and my debut in Swan Lake. I mean, in Russia, you do it for yourself and you fight for your ass and that's it. And your coach is there too. <laughs> yeah, this is really hard. I love my friends in the ballet, but also still connected to the world. And they always come to the shows and they are amazed by what we do. So Chloe, thank you so much for joining me today. It's uh, a real honor to have you here and I'm so excited to chat with you finally. Um, we've been chatting back and forth for a long time and so it's really nice to finally see you. Um, I want to start from the very beginning with you. So you were born in London, is that right? Yes, that's right. My father was working for the Eurostar, um, Paris, London. Um, but they were living in London, so yeah. Yeah, so you were born in London, and then how did you start ballet? So I was always, always, always dancing. Um, my parents always worked a lot, but I guess it was also a way to get some attention, and uh, it was just in me, and still now if there is a bit of music in a bar or something, I'm always dancing. <laughs> um, so I think it was for me also very much from early on a way to express myself um, and I just loved it and um, yeah I was doing a lot of competitions when I was living in Paris and um, they told me you have to go to Paris Opera Ballet School and I tried and I got in and and then it was a bit of a change um, I wasn't anymore this little <laughs> dancing queen <laughs> um, it became straight away very um, disciplined and um, everything took a different um, perspective. Mm. But I guess um, I've always been very athletic. I was always doing like surfing and skiing and wakeboarding and um, tennis and everything. Gymnastics. I was also championships of gymnastics when I was like six. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, I guess I really liked the um, pushing myself side. But the yeah, discipline, the discipline was um, very hard, um, not in the ballet way, but everything aside, mm. being very, not laughing in the corridors, like um, not being a child anymore, um, I would say. Yeah, you enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think I enjoyed the discipline in the ballet, but the discipline outside ballet was really... It was hard. It was harder. Yeah, it was like a hit. I understood in the ballet side because I was really driven and... I don't know, somehow I had the taste for it. Mm. Um, but the discipline outside was a bit of a, whew, a shock, like fit in the <laughs> box, you know, all of that um, very early on to to understand uh, how to behave. Yeah. So it sounds like you were quite naturally, naturally athletic and 
possibly drawn to ballet by music is that yeah. right like yeah was, yeah would you say that that was the thing because I was similar like it wasn't necessarily I saw a dancer on stage and was like I want to be her it was more how music made me feel and it made yeah. me want to dance yeah, yeah. literally so, that's it yeah so you you were at Paris Opera Ballet School mm -hmm. which is very very intense I assume <laughs> and, and then Tell us a bit more about that, because after that, you you joined the Royal Ballet School. Yes. Um, so I joined the upper school. So I did the lower school process in Paris Opera Ballet. And um, then I was a teenager and I was like, I want to go back to my roots. Um, <laughs> I literally, in mathematics um, exams, I was filling in my Royal Ballet. Um, application. By myself, application. <laughs> And then one day my parents received a letter being like, your daughter is accepted to come audition a robe. And my parents were just like, what the hell is going on? Um, and then I said, yeah, I'm going back to my roots. I'm 15. I'm a grown up girl. And they were like, um, I mean, they work a lot and whatever I would want to do, they would just let me do. As long as I had good grades, I could do whatever I wanted. So off we went. I auditioned and it worked. And off I moved to London. So what um, what was it? Because I'm interested to hear this because obviously Paris Opera is seen as, you know, extremely world-class school, as is the Royal Ballet School. But I feel like Paris um, is really up there. And so what was it that made you actually think, do you know what, I want I want to change? Yeah. Um, so honestly, first of all, the upper school was way more intense than Paris Opera training. Um, the, the international side of it, um, the Royal Ballet is so open-minded, um, they're up to date in all the techniques, um, mm -hmm. in the body conditioning. So I would say Paris Opera is magical, is historical and, uh, ancestral, um, more like in the Russian way. And, mm -hmm. you know, you keep history, you don't change things. It's been like this forever. It's, um, you pass on. Mm. And um, I'll say Royal was um, more, okay, we are here today, choreographers of today, techniques of today, medicines, um, studies, science of today, and um, and a melting pot of people. Because in Paris Opera, it's just French people. Yes. I mean, don't get me wrong. They are open. <laughs> but Royal Ballet is built of um, differences. Yeah, it is very international. Um... Exactly. And I think I was really, as of my parents traveling always and everything, I was really appealed to, to this and the open-mindedness of, um, yeah. of what's outside, what's the world. and um, Of course. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I did similar, but the opposite. So I <laughs> I started there and then at 15, I said, I'm going. <laughs> I've had yeah. enough. <laughs> um, I want something different. Um, so, yeah, I totally understand. And it's, um, I think we're similar in that regard. Like also just like constantly trying to grow as people as well as dancers, like just always feed yourself with more inspiring things. Um, and I do think, you know, the Royal Ballet School is is good with the foreigners that come in later. You know, I think they have like a bit of issue home growing their own. But with the foreigners, they're very good. <laughs> um, and I wanted to ask you, so after you finished the Royal Ballet School, you what, was did you have desire to join the Royal Ballet itself, the company? Because you went back, didn't you, to Paris Opera, is that right? Yes, I actually got a contract before <clears throat> before third year. Right. Um, I think, well, we can't rewrite the past, but um, mm. the times I was at the Royal Ballet was with Gavin Spock. Yeah. Um, a woman I, I love and I'm so thankful to, and um, she definitely wanted me at the Royal Ballet. Um, but in my second year, she got really ill. Yeah. And um, and very sadly she passed away and um, I don't know it's funny she she I really felt like she was my mentor and 
um, her not being in the school anymore. I was, yeah, it was in one sense, everything was written. She was there. I was just royal and that was it. And um, once again, kind of like in Paris, I was in Paris and everything would go. And then I went and um, so yeah, it was a royal and Galen wasn't there anymore. And I just felt like, okay, she's not here. What's the point? Um, yeah. So I was like, well, I'm just going to go try the audition in Paris like that, you know, like, okay, it's um, a class, a solo, I'll just go pull it out. And uh, <laughs> I made it and I got the contract. So I was like, um, mom and dad, I'm not doing third year. Um, I'm coming back to Paris. <laughs> oh, right. And, so you uh, actually, yeah. What? Okay. That's really interesting. So Gaylene was, um, a big part of your journey at the Royal Ballet School. And then yeah. when she died, and I know about that as well, because um, I think I was also like, um, maybe I was already in Russia at that time. But um, I understand that because I also had this very um, big mentor of mine in the Garnava, and he was he was yeah. a ballet master as well. And when he died, it's almost like he was – and Gaylene was very much a part of that whole picture of London of the Royal Ballet School of everything and when that's gone it's like you lose a part of your existence there and it's it almost like I understand it just almost doesn't it's like the past it and it's like this was in the past now because without them this isn't me in this scenario I need to also leave you know yeah so so that was that was the um, that was it. I mean, I was still quite young, but uh, very strong-minded. And I um, can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, um, because I had been chosen always to do the solo evenings. Um, got Barton Lynx and more. Also, was always working with the company for mm. Swan Lake, for um, Nutcracker in the holidays. I remember we had three-week term holiday or something like this and um i remember i told my parents i'm not going on holidays i'm being i've been chosen to work with the company and i'm staying and i'm just like <laughs> don't you want to rest sometimes my like, oh, it's fine <laughs> so yeah it was going very well and we had always this open day so they would just come and chat with gaylene and uh, yeah yeah so off i'm back to paris <laughs> yeah were you not um because obviously leaving school early and not essentially not graduating is quite a big decision um because obviously you know did you were you afraid or were you slightly concerned about that or did you just feel because you're obviously strong-minded we've established that did you just feel no I'm ready like this is fine I'll go oh I um I think I did not even think it could be um, an issue. I was like, I got the contract. Galen is not here anymore. I did speak a little bit to the third year teacher and I went to her and I said, look, I love you. I would love to have a year with you. But I got a contract in Paris Opera and Galen is not here. And she did tell me like, third year is to get a contract. You already have one. Um, I love you. I'd love you to have my students and like, take your success in my name but you can already go and uh, mm. you are ready so and I also I had the chance to meet with Sylvie Guillem oh. back when I was in London yes <laughs> and she <laughs> she um she was uh, performing quite a lot and I was always going to her performances when I was in Paris but also then when I was in London and uh, I had the chance to meet her and she coached me oh wow and she told me dance and um yeah, and then she was like, why are you in school? Like, you know, like, just go out there and start. Like, there is no there is no waiting to be ready. You just go and you do it. So I was like, she said this. She's I've got to listen earth. to Sylvie Gam. I've got to listen to her. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's like my idol. I also, back yeah. then, I was obsessed with her. And um, I mean, I'm still, but. Yeah, um, me too. <laughs> So yeah, so so that was it, basically. Very easy. Um, not much overthinking, that's for sure. Mm. Um, which I became later, but uh, <laughs> but on these on these days, I was really 
I'm dancing, I'm training, like giving it all. Um, I was very, very, you know, like first of the class nerdy. And I was like, some days I would arrive at Royal, the doors were not even open. Um, and I would just wait for the doors to open so I could do this and do that. And yeah, yeah I was really dedicated for the least we can say <laughs> yeah well I think you have to be I mean you know it is your life and Definitely. in order to do to do well in it especially ballet you have to dedicate yourself 100% um, but it sounds like you're very good at also just listening to your gut and not at least I, I know you just mentioned you overthink possibly later in life but um, at least at this point you didn't really overthink a lot of your decisions you just thought to yourself this feels right I'm going to do that let's see what happens oh I've got in sure <laughs> yeah basically this is it I think it also comes from the the freedom I've always had from my parents um mm. the fact that they were very busy um yeah there is poor and cons but um that for sure let me yeah behave so you had like to make, yeah so you had to make a lot of your own decisions yeah yeah well it's it's worked out um <laughs> <laughs> so tell us now so you, you you're at Paris Opera and how initially did you enjoy it how did it feel was it another big transition for you so in a sense it was a bit like going home but for sure it was a transition because from being a student in Paris Opera and then working is a total different story yeah. um I think this is a shock wherever you go wherever you transition it's just you're not prepared or you are prepared, but it's, you, you have to adjust. Let's say we have to adjust um, because it's nothing like it. And um, yeah, I did really enjoy it. I've got to dance a lot, a lot, a lot. I was also asked to do a mini gala. So I've performed in Japan. I've performed in the US um, because that's something really common in Paris Opera. You do a lot of galas. So I did. Um, all the principal roles, even though I was um, doing different things in the company, but mm. I also had some nice opportunities through Balanchine. Um, the thing is, the the times I was in Paris Opera, it was um, a shift every year, so of direction. We had Brigitte Lefebvre, and then a year later, it was Benjamin Lantier, and then two years later, it was Aurélie Dupont, and then a few years later, she was also given to leave. And I was mm. like, if you refer back to this story with Galen Stock, where you want yeah. to have a mentor and mm -hmm. um, someone there, as my parents are here, but working a lot, mm -hmm. I was just constantly changing. And um, mm -hmm. I, I had the feeling also I needed um, a support, you know? Yeah. So, um, and I had very good um, people inside the company um, guiding me and all these people that took me for galas and they were like oh there is this grand edition thing maybe you should give it a go and I was like oh lord you know what I don't want to do anything but I'm just gonna sign up and I'll just prepare a solo and yeah because it's on stage so off I go to Barcelona <laughs> with no <laughs> expectations my friend literally he was soloist in the company and told me yeah just give it a try was that fine? Okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> and if I go there and, um, and probably because I was, expect I had zero expectations. I walk out of there and I have all the contracts, every yeah, single that's, company. That's amazing. And I'm like, um, this is not part <laughs> of the plan. <laughs> but I also think that must have felt so great. Because also it's very, I mean, obviously by this point, you must know that you're a fantastic dancer. Like everything you've wanted, you've basically been given because of how much you gave to your training. You know, like you, you've obviously honed your skill to such a degree that you can have all these choices, which is really fantastic. But having said that, when you're on that stage at the Grand Audition in Barcelona, which is a great scheme, um, you must have been like, oh wow, I must, I must, I must be pretty good. <laughs> Considering <laughs> I was like, all this when I was at Royal Ballet, we were training so much, and in the weekends, I was taking the Eurostar, going back to Paris, training, 
past days and days going back to royal training um and i was like whoa like i mean i did this myself so no one i mean my parents if i was a doctor or a police like you know like bill gates they'd be even more happy if i had done (laughs) a lawyer or anything but so it was all for me and um yeah, I guess I just always went full on, but it was a bit of an over- overwhelming because then I was like, I have all this contract. I don't really know <laughs> what to mm. do. It's um, it's almost too much. Because um, were, were you thinking of at Paris Opera, obviously, you know, a lot of the change was happening with the directors and it's kind of like starting fresh again each time there's a new director um, and that's very tiring. Um were you thinking at that point? I know it was kind of on a whim. You went to the grand audition, but were you thinking about leaving the Paris Opera? Um, probably subconsciously, honestly, consciously, no. Um, because I also we had some holidays, and I went to London. I took some classes, and um, just to see everyone and my classmates. And uh, Kevin O'Hare was there also, mm. and um, and I was like, oh, I could leave back in London. Or I could live in Amsterdam, or I could leave, you know, I, the thing of like being free is like, you don't have that fear of um, starting fresh or leaving, mm. because, um, yeah, uh, but then COVID was also a different story, because, oh, uh, yes, anyways, but um, yeah, <laughs> so every, I'm coming back from this grand edition to Paris, and everyone is like, oh my God, Chloe, like, People can't even get one contract and you have like eight contracts and like you've got Marinsky and you've got Asda and you've got this and you've got that and you've got principal here and you've got like, and I was just like listening to people, but not really consciously acknowledging what happened. Yeah. And then two weeks later, Grand Edition is like, okay, Chloe, we have a long list. We're like, we're holding on so many contracts. Like you need to give an answer. Oh, and I was gosh. like, all oh, right, this happened two weeks ago. I was back in my shows in Paris Opera. Um, <laughs> <laughs> She's moved on. <laughs> exactly. And um, and then more and more, you know, just in the canteen, some principals would be like, oh, my God, you've been offered, like, Marinsky. Oh, my God, you've been offered this. Oh, my God, you've been offered that. And then you had some more dancers would be like, oh, my God, if I, if I was your age again, I would have totally leave. And now I did my whole career just here, la, la, la. So everyone kind of just like, you know, giving the little involved. Talks. Everyone <laughs> got involved, even though I asked nothing. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And then, I don't know. Um, they asked me, what do you do? And I was like, oh, I'm going to Marinsky. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so that was it. Off I was to, to go to Russia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what... Obviously, out of all those contracts, because I assume assume some of them were like principal and like quite high up. Why Having said that, to? though, I feel like I feel like Marinsky is hard to turn down. Um, the coach. Um, yeah. So basically, I was going there as so. So I would just have my coach. Yeah. And work with my coach. And this, if you refer again to uh, the mental dealing, thing, the mental thing. I was yeah. like, this is it. This is what I want. I want someone on me 24-7, pushing me to the best, to my limits, um, mm. feeding me also because, I mean, you know, in Russia, there is no limit. There is no working hours. There is no weekends. No. Like, it's just you live for this. And, yeah. there, is, and there is also no limit of knowledge because, mm. because also the society is different. It's not so much about, um you don't have all this like um OC you know or I don't know how you say this uh, unions you know all of that yeah. it's just you go there for for the more you work like oh my god Chloe like you're rehearsing Giselle at 11 p.m on stage with your coach this is so cool and I'm like in the beginning uh no this is illegal <laughs> everyone is like you're so lucky la 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 and then I I started to just love it like if I had it was really she was just, she was just who like was my your, mom. Who was your coach? Um, Lyubov Olimpivna Kunakova. Oh. Right? Yeah. <laughs> she was also the coach of uh, Vika, Teryoshkina, and all this, oh, these principles. I mean, amazing. This peop- it's like from, yeah, it's just looking at literally shining stars and uh, walking legends. 
and um and she was just never counting she would come she would do my hair my makeup she would offer me like diadema when i had premiere of queen of dryads and even though i was doing queen of dryads she's like so we rehearsed key tree today and i'm like um sure <laughs> but i have my debut tonight she's like yeah yeah it's fun so i would just run <laughs> once my solo of queen of dryads and then we would just rehearse key tree she would find me partners and yeah it was yeah um, i think that's uh like I've always found it quite comical at Marinsky where like you said there just there is no limit so it's like you've just done a whole show and then afterwards they go okay come to studio we we rehearse something else and obviously (laughs) obviously you're like exhausted (laughs) exhausted and tired and you're like okay (laughs) you know so I think looking after yourself in that routine is like a skill in itself you know and obviously in the French culture it's very much it's five o'clock done time to go home and so time for croissant and cafe little resplendent la 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 <laughs> exactly I love your accent I think I want to be French <laughs> um but yeah so but like you said you know in Russia they just do they just do live and breathe it and that's one thing I I feel like you can never replicate anywhere else is the relationship with your coach or your teacher. And like you said, you become so close and they'll do anything for you. They'll be with you all the time. They'll call you all the time as well and just make sure you're okay. And it's, it's very, very special. Um, and so, you know, I'm so happy that you've like had that experience as well, because especially now with everything that's going on in, in the world, I feel like it's even more special because who knows when, you know, things will be different again in that regard. Um, So obviously with Marinsky, did you envision yourself at that time, like this is my place? Did you you envision you'd stay there long term? Um, So I have to admit it was um, a shock of cultures because it's so engraved in our education. Just the way we think is just so far and especially, I went there already, I would say, an established woman. Of course, I'm still growing and learning. and yeah. But it was quite, um, I already had a few experiences. Um, yeah, I was 23. Mm. Um, and so in the beginning, I was like, wait, what? You know, like I would be on a Sunday, 8 p.m., working. The kid would be there. And you'd just be like, what on earth? And afterwards, yeah. after six months, you get completely brainwashed and you're still, like, you don't even see it. And you just, you just want, like, before I'd be like, but why? It's Sunday. Why am I going to go? And then it's just like, you don't even think. You're just that you want. Like, I was just dying for this moment with my coach. Like, um, yeah, I was, like, debuting, like, the friend of Paquita or the friend of Juliet. And then in the interval, she'd be like, yeah, let's go. Or, like, with the music would be playing from the show. I would yeah. be rehearsing Juliet um, in the <laughs> studio. So these things, and then it just makes your life thrilling and it's amazing um, for my career. But mm. the side of your personal life, which still exists, um, we're not just dancers. <laughs> yeah. If you come from Europe, you know. If you come from there, it's fine. It's just everything like this. But yeah. I think also if you've been raised in a different way, you also know that there is there is a life outside the theater. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, there <laughs> is, and I think I think there should be. Yeah, and um, so that was really really hard. Um, mm. But I think it only hit because of COVID. Otherwise, I was in there, and you actually don't even have time to understand. That's yeah, also the way people are. But how do you hold on? And you just hold on because you don't have time to be like, oh, how am I feeling today? How is my, you know, there is none of this. It's not all about this well-being and like asking yourself. That we do a lot in Europe, which I'm not blaming or saying it's right or wrong. Everyone is happy to do whatever feels right to them. Mm. Um, But I'm just explaining how how you can keep going. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like sometimes it's much easier to keep going than it is to stop and think because obviously when it's like with anything if you 
Like sometimes I find if you do loads of exercise and then you stop and rest, you realize how tired you are. Yes. But if you do, if you just keep going and you do rehearsal after rehearsal after rehearsal, you kind of somehow it's less tiring. And you, and you, because you're so up from the dopamine and the adrenaline and, um, you know, you just get used to that. And again, not saying that's right, but it's, it's, the body is amazing at how it adapts. And so you obviously, after a while, obviously it's a bit of a culture shock, like Sunday, hell no. But then yeah. after a while, you there do get no used Sunday. to it. Sunday, yeah. It's just, yeah. You know, it's just labels. It's just uh, things we create in our societies and we... Of course. We shape and, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it was pretty, it was pretty an amazing uh, in all sides. I mean, I'm, I think if I had knew what would be there, I don't know, um, but I would never change. Like I would do it again um, yeah. without knowing what was coming. <laughs> yeah. I would do it again. Um, but, um, but yes. Um, so what changed? When, when did you? COVID happened. Yeah. Um, so COVID happened. Nothing was happening in Russia, but uh, everywhere in the world, the world was shutting down and we were keep on working. I had really? to have my debut. Yeah. I had to have my debut as Sleeping Beauty and my debut in Swan Lake. Yeah. Um, so even though um, at one point, the Russia gave a week holiday for the whole city, something like this. Um, but I was still working with my coach. So the whole theater so was shut down and my coach was like, you have your debut in Swan Lake. We have to keep rehearsing and... Um, and um, so, so would you, I would be all alone in the whole Marine the theater. theater with my coach and one guy that she would have asked to come and rehearse with me, working on Odile and Death all day long. Wow. Um, yeah. And then one day, um, security found us and we got kicked out of the theater. Mm. And she's like, it's time. We're going to rent a studio. We're going to find some different places. And I was like, okay, the world is shutting down. There is potentially COVID, even though you say there is none. <laughs> and it's a different generation. And um, I'm someone I, I cannot really accept everyone's opinion. And I'm like, you know, she's a different, like, I love her. She's my coach. She says there is no COVID. Sure. Like, you believe what you want to believe. My family is in France. I have also some Italian friends. And yeah. also in the Netherlands, some family. and. The world is shut down, but sure. And at one point, you were just like, I don't know what to do. You look at the news in Russia, it's different. Then you look at the news in Europe, and it's a total different world. And you're like, yeah. I don't know where I'm living. I don't know what's happening. This needs to end because it's like you have no idea like on which planet you're on. It's just like which reality. Yeah, I do feel like Russia was very separate. Oh, and you're doing the ballet the world. every day preparing for this role when theaters are closed and it's just like that's where reality hits because I yeah yeah it was really hard um couple of weeks and um because in the beginning the theater was shutting down but then we were still doing shows it was not shutting down but one day it did really shut down doors were closed yeah uh we kept going on so then yeah and then security was like you can't be here like so then I'm like, okay, I'm home in Russia and I'm not training like crazy. And I'm like, what am I doing here? You know, mm. in a different reality, the news is not the same. Um, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do? You know? Um, yeah. So they did say, we're not going to pay foreigners if they're not staying in the country. And um, yeah, I was just trying to call the consulate and they were like, no, it's fine. But then the consulate in France was like, you need to come back. So the French consulate in Russia was like, it's all good. But the consulate in France was like, you need to come back, you need to come yeah. back. So mm. they were like, airports are closing. And then I was asking in Russia, people were like, no, it will never close. And then St. Petersburg closed. But <laughs> Moscow will never close. And then you're like, okay, um, my parents are already locked. Can't even go to the grocery store. And, like, if I ever manage to get there, like, no one can pick me up from the airport. 
Oh God. And then I received a call from um from a friend that I made in Russia and um I know people say Russian people are cold, but once mm. you break the oh, iron so, wall, yeah. they're, they're so your warm. family. They're mm. so warm. Like and I had one hour to leave because it was the last plane. And they organized everything. This woman and her husband um organized people to lift my suitcases. I mean I, I took whatever I could take, my passport and a suitcase of a few things. Yeah. And I left my home, I oh. left everything. I left my wow. coffee machine, I left oh. my lotion bags, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. And um and then I arrived in your in in Paris and I was in shock. The city was dead. Uh, my dad, he he still came even though he was not allowed. He had mm. this massive mask, and it was it was dead Paris. And I was like, wait, where am I? I felt like I I went in a different metaverse, literally. Yeah, that's. Um, I do feel like Russia basically ignored what completely. was going on, completely. and it sounds like your coach even like was coping with what was going on by like ignoring it and just like working and kept it's like working. everyone like I yeah know exactly and it's so I think if I had never lived in Russia I could not understand but because I had lived there and um yeah I was it was really hard to see um yeah. of course I accepted it um also I loved her so much but it was it was um it was funny. We both accepted each other's choice because mm. I did call her and I have a plan in one hour. And she was like, why are you going to go to Europe? You're going to get sick. Stay here. <sighs> stay with me. And wow. she was like, but of course you have to, to listen to your dusha. And I was like, <laughs> man, don't do this to me. Like, it's so hard. I want to stay with you. And But I really felt like I was completely torn, you know, like... Mm. Um, oh, that would have been so difficult. It was so hard. It was really hard. I bet. Because once again, you know, my path was there. I was, uh, my dream was to become yeah the first principal French of Marinsky. And we were preparing everything, and um, yeah, and I left, and I we nobody knew. Also, it was um, COVID, right? Yeah. Um, now it's behind. We know, but back in the days, we had no clue. So I left with nothing. Arrived in France, locked down, couldn't even go to the grocery store for two months. I didn't pass the door. Wow. Yeah, I know. Mean, it was um, awful. It was. And I had nothing. I had my passport and that was it. Mm. And mm. my dreams and everything. And I was just there. And um, yeah, I it was, was going there every day. But, yeah. you know, what can we do? It was very much at that time, like one day at a time. And I think... Yeah probably in your mind did you think okay I'm just gonna do this one day at a time and then did I'm you back think, tomorrow okay, in my brain I was like I'm back tomorrow I'm back yeah tomorrow. I'll go back I'll go back in in a minute yeah because obviously I had no idea you were preparing Swan Lake like Odette Odile right yeah I was July was supposed to be Odette Odile and in May I was supposed to do Sleeping Beauty yeah I mean that that is um like phenomenal and that that is really like history breaking, you know. I mean, I was just like, I have to keep going. I have to keep going. But then, as the days were going, I was like, there was no flag because she was asking yeah. me, "When are you back? When are you back?" I'm like, "Oh, next week, next week." And then I would go online, no flag. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not gonna swim there, you know, or walk or fly, you know, no. like, <laughs> by myself with my wings. No. <laughs> so slowly, reality hit. Because mm. even though I had news from my family, I was not leaving there they already had a month of this that reality I was doing my life in Russia so yeah. it took me a while um to acknowledge what was happening in the other side of the world I was I was not in denial when I was in Russia but when I arrived in Europe I was like I'm in total denial yeah so not in denial but I have no clue what's going on because or when you can go back yeah and then yeah. because I was like I was telling everyone yeah I'm back I'm back I'm back but I could never go back mm. um so that was yeah and slowly you accept you, I mean you have no no other choice or you keep being oblivious but no so 
the pain of understanding what was going on. And I was like, yeah. okay, maybe I don't go back. And then I couldn't fly back to Russia, but life started again in the summer. Mm -hmm. And um, I had one of the first real summer as a normal human with no ballet because nothing was still going on, but you could slowly leave. And, um, and I was like, wow, that's the life outside. And yeah. I was like, I don't know what to do. And then September <laughs> comes and I'm like, still can't really go back to Russia. But I had lived and um, I have to do this movie with Polina Semyonova for Masterclass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that it was, was to dance Masterclass and it was Swan Lake. Yeah. So I was like, of course, I would love to be coached with her. And uh, so we worked. I went to Berlin. And um, I worked with Polina Semyonova on Swan Lake and we filmed it and um, it was very nice. I mean, she was also such an inspiration, such a kind person. I I mean, amazing. And yeah. I could just look at her for hours. I know, I know. I We have actually interviewed her um, on here and it was the best hour ever. It was, <laughs> and she yeah. is such a kind person and so yeah. humble and I'm like I'm sorry but do you see yourself like this is amazing I was just like I can't believe I have to dance one leg solo when you were like watching me no <laughs> yeah that's that mu that's intense that um, was um, magical though and then they were like yeah you should stay in Berlin get a contract here and I'm like okay and then it's Kurzarbeit I don't know if you know so it's because of COVID the state yeah. puts the um, all the institutions in this break it so I couldn't sign my contract but it was there waiting for me they wanted to offer me for a soloist so I was like sure so I mm. moved to Berlin um get a flat <laughs> get my changing room and I stayed there for half a year okay mm. and then in January uh, we were thinking I could sign and everything move on but we go back into lockdown oh uh. This never ending loop. And I'm like, yeah. okay, we go back into lockdown. What am I going to do? Train at home? Like, can't do this again. Um, so I apply um, to Munich and I get a contract. And I'm like, yeah. at least I can train somewhere. And I'm being paid because you also have to, you know, leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, was... So, yeah, off I move again. And, um, but yeah, I, it was really more in a way of like, where can I train? I need to right. need, things needs to fall into place after lockdown and after COVID. And mm. uh, and I was like, okay, where do I want to leave? Because it was still, I mean, you know, I we did a few shows, but it was still COVID. And uh, yeah, I I've been lucky to meet amazing people. But yeah, I think it's amazing. You know, you've literally hopped from contract to contract, which is amazing. Um, but I think as well when you get to, because how old are you now? Uh, I just turned 28, so... 28, yeah. So I feel like when you get to sort of past the age of 25, I I found as well, you just start to think a bit more about yeah. what's my life actually looking like as well, like outside of the ballet. Because obviously in the lockdown as well, you think about it more because you're, you're just not as busy. But yeah. I think very much so, you do think, could I actually see myself settling here in this town in this city you know so at this point in your life were you already starting to think like that yeah literally so it was a bit of a um, I'm not gonna say a shit show but kind of because <laughs> I was this age and it was exactly during the pandemic so I was like yeah. I'm this age I want to settle and there is nowhere we work the world is shut down yeah so I'm like I know I want to settle somewhere I don't want to move but Due to the situation, I had no other choice to do it. So I was a bit like, I was grateful and I'm still happy I've had the, the strength and just the perseverance to keep going, even yeah. though it was just also not what I wanted to do. I mean, it's not easy to just keep on moving, but it was yeah. COVID. I had so many friends with no contracts, just being home and, you know, like, barely making it to pay the rent because yeah, there was nothing going on and there was one thing only I want to do is settle and finally go back to my dream which I had to quit a few times already yeah. because of the stories I've already said and um, and I'm just like there's one thing I want to do and I just can't do it because it's COVID and 
things keep being shut down, being back into lockdown. And I'm like, how, when is this going to stop? And then even more, where, where do I want to be? Yeah. Because when things are finally going to be fine, which we had no idea when, I'm like, I need to, I need to stop somewhere. And yes, I have the resources. Yes, I, I can push always, but at one point it's also really tiring. And, um, and yeah, I want to build a life somewhere and, um, yeah, and yeah, get attached <laughs> and everything. So, yeah, exactly. I was <laughs> like, <"Oof>, okay. <laughs> I think also um, it must have been hard for you because I, I understand because even myself when I left Russia for my own reasons, um, it's very hard to, I found it very hard to think think that anywhere else would match up to that kind of, um, I want to say standard, but it's more, it's more the passion, you know, because obviously with the coach and everything, like that's very hard to let go. And so when you were dancing in these other companies, like, Berlin and Munich did you feel also did you feel when you were there like a slight sadness for the fact that you couldn't go back to Russia uh, I honestly I do think Russia changed me and uh, yeah. yeah when I was in Munich and we had these uh, unions meetings for things that matter but I was like I felt I went to the other side. I was like, I really don't understand um, why I'm sitting here and not rehearsing and talking about this rehearsal at 2.010 when we're supposed to finish, I don't know, you know, all these things. And I was like, this is yeah. such a waste of my time. Um, but once again, being back in Europe, and I understand it's important, fight for your rights, get the things to the dot. <laughs> sure. But yeah, it's... And it's um, very different. It's so different. And... Um, and you, you understand actually why they're so good in Russia because this time you spend speculating about these rules or um, this comfort, or, which is very nice. Now um, I'm at Head National. We have an amazing gym. We have amazing yeah. um, facilities. And I'm so amazed by it. This comfort is just amazing. And you see the people enjoying it. But I also know myself, I'm not falling into that. I, I take it because it's there. Mm. But because of Russia, I'm also, yeah, you know, this is it. And you know, you know why people, not lazy, but it's just comfort. Of course, you know, it's human. And um, you see the difference. You see. Oh, yeah, of course. Because they live, they do live, literally live and breathe art. So obviously, you're at Het National now. Yeah. And so how did, how did that move happen? Um, so I, <laughs> I have family here in the Netherlands. I had already been offered a contract, uh, I think two times. Um, oh, okay. National. So they were keen. And, um, and I have family here. So, I mean, it was again, um, lockdown in Munich and it was Easter actually, exactly now. Oh, wow. And, uh, I was like, I mean, there's nothing to do and, I was like, I'm just going to fly over and see them. Flew over and I was like, just saying, I'm here. Um, maybe you can take class. They were like, yeah, can you do a solo? Because you actually cannot do, take class because of COVID still. And I was yeah. sure. So then I did Ramonda solo and they were like, yeah, get a contract. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and, everyone uh, listening, everyone listening is going to hate you, Chloe. I'm joking. <laughs> no, I mean, come on. See how many times I went by myself with like six suitcases and uh, traveling. And um... no, you were super brave as well. Very brave, yeah. very motivated, very um, like, yeah, I like jokes aside throughout this whole process. I know you would have uh, just to keep that morale up and that motivation would have taken everything and so yeah I really commend you because everything you have you've totally worked for and so uh, yeah. yeah no you don't even need to tell me I know um, <laughs> <laughs> so and I know I have been to Amsterdam and um, obviously I've, I've ch I know Anna Oll and obviously Olga um, and it is I've been in the theatre and it is like a wonderful place. And I can imagine it, like you said, very comfortable. You're very looked after. Um, but I think you're wise to take what you've learned from 
the Russian culture and kind of hold on to that and like hold on to that sort of passion for what you do and that very hardworking spirit. Um, so obviously you can enjoy the facilities, enjoy the comfort, but, um, I think what will help you throughout your whole career. And I, I know you've already realized this is just holding on to that drive and that hardworking passion for the ballet itself. Obviously Olga's there now and I'm assuming for her, it's a huge, huge culture shock as we, well. Yeah, we are, the, we are together. Um, we're next to each other in the changing rooms and oh, that's it's so really nice. funny because in Marinsky, <laughs> She came to dance Giselle, and I was doing with a friend of Giselle with her. Yeah. Oh. And, uh, in Marinsky, we were together in the changing rooms when she came to guest. So um, we found each other be... again, and it's yeah, it's just um, it's just it's just yeah, it's it's. I mean, who would have thought, you know? And it's really funny because um, well, we're friends now, and um, yeah, we talk a lot about it, and uh, and sometimes it's hard for both of us. We're like. I mean, like now we do Swan Lake and yeah, sometimes there are things happening and you're just like, heck, like what? Um, and yeah, you also have to learn to, to let go and yeah, you have your passion and this, you know, it's how it's supposed to be. But if you move, then you also have to accept the differences and um, mm. and adapt. But um, yeah, it's really, I mean, she came for different reasons and probably if I hadn't yeah. moved during COVID, I would have you would, would have, have moved, moved yeah. afterwards mm. um but it's um I mean I'm really happy she's next to me and um yeah I mean having Olga as a dressing room buddy is the best <laughs> just the best thing ever I would be like we share chocolate always <laughs> yeah between rehearsal Literally, and it's very nice. We can like talk a lot. Obviously, I speak Russian. I mean, she has really English as well. And um, yeah, I love watching her, and we talk a lot about Russia. Mm. And um, yeah, I but, mean, yeah. When I was in when I was in school, because obviously I joined from the Royal Ballet School, and then obviously it's for a, another culture shock going to Russia. But obviously, she was in school, and I just loved I just loved watching her, and I learned so much from watching her just yeah. her approach she's very wise very mature for her age like especially at that so time clever. obviously so clever very intelligent um yeah and just a, a wonderful person and it's it's nice to know she's learning English now I'm sure she's getting good at English yeah she's really really good she's um <laughs> she's really good and uh I I learn every day from her and she's um she's always been an inspiration and Mm. when I was a young kid I would just look at her like oh my god oh my god and now also age age difference is not the same also when you grow up um mm. but uh, yeah and now we're next to each other and we have conversations and I'm like I would have never imagined this little Chloe from Paris Opera Petit Rat de l'Opera you know so yeah. life has its way sometimes you wonder why and this and that and you just keep going and um and then, yeah, you're just like, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> no, it's very special. I think Amsterdam, you know, have taken in dancers, like such amazing dancers with obviously the crisis in the world, but they've suddenly got these amazing dancers there, like you and Olga and Victor and um, all these people. So I think it's, you know, a wonderful place to be, it sounds like. Um, yeah, the city is really nice as well to live in. It's, yeah, so uh, nice small but you have everything from big cities in a small scale and uh, you do everything with your bike and, yeah uh, yeah so nice in the summer um so Chloe what's what's next for you you know what are you performing next and what goals do you have on the horizon um well on the horizon I'm hoping to rise <laughs> <laughs> um I um of course will keep working for it and um mm. there's a lot of um um yeah as when you move again it's um there's people that have been there for a long time so it's always also tricky to yeah of course to go up. reputation again exactly um but um I'm also a very kind person and uh for me it's also important to to feel in the company and genuinely um 
more on the European side, build relationships with everyone. And um, mm. and now through Swanek, um, I was actually doing the four little farms. Yeah. And um, I mean, in Marinsky, I was just doing solo roles and I was just with my coach. And um, it, it has been like a long time. I haven't had this team spirit and it's been pretty amazing this with these four girls um what we've built like we go on stage and we literally do it for each other which is something i mean in russia you do it for yourself and you fight for your ass and that's it and your coach (laughs) is there too (laughs) as well but um this has been like an amazing team spirit i've discovered here um Mm. and then i've done like pretty much um a lot of um, pas de trois. Um, also, we have in this version this pas de six, um, yeah. in the third act. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I'm also doing always like pas de trois, pas de six, pas de trois, four little ones. So, all the big, big, big uh, challenges parts. Um, it was a bit hard in the beginning um, rehearsing because obviously I was supposed to do my debut. Yeah. And I was oh, of mercy. course. Mentally, so, mentally, that was kind of um, a little bit did it, of a. Um, did it feel like you were going backwards for a second? Um, it does still feel like I'm going backwards. Yes, right. <laughs> Not gonna. I'm, if I'm really being honest, um, yeah, yeah. This is really hard. Um, and once again, it's really not easy because you're supposed to do something. You work for it. It's your dream, and you're accessing it, and then world crisis and then you land somewhere and and you do again and then you're not doing what you supposed to do so yeah um when you think people can hate me for all my contracts but at the end of the day i'm there fighting for of course just being doing this like i mean and all this like i would not even do for just one thing honestly, you know yeah so um, well, the reward of pushing through is what we created with my team, with the team. Um, so that's been very magical, which I didn't think because in the beginning it was really hard to do it. And I thought, like, okay, just let go, accept it. This is what's today. And you still have to, to make it through. So how? And then in the end, mm-hmm. this magical feelings came. And uh, I was like, okay, that's maybe the reward of it. And um, for pushing through and uh, swallowing the bitter taste. So I think I think Russia for you, like with a lot of people, it's so intense and it's so it's so like like you're just in this bubble and it's like you said, there's no days off. It's it's very intense. Your coach is all about you and it's amazing. But I think it's not, you know for whatever reason it's not hugely sustainable that kind of that kind of life so I know you've moved now to Amsterdam and maybe you're not exactly happy with where you are at the moment but I think everything you want like you almost had it somewhere else and I think you'll definitely you'll 100% get it here I think your progress is and the progress you want is completely inevitable because I feel like because you're in a place now where life can be more sustainable I think it's going at a pace that's more um what's the word like uh, more of a normal pace yeah. and that's why you're not used to that because in Russia it was very much like whoosh like we like you fine Odette yeah <laughs> you know so <laughs> and so you know I think like like you were saying but it's just like I think one day at a time and everything you want is going to come to you and then in a few years time maybe less than that probably less you'll then be like okay now I have what I want and I have the life I want I have the house and it's like everything you'll be a thousand times happier than what yeah. your situation was like before I hope so <laughs> I wonder that's what I think I like I really like really much what you say <laughs> no but I yeah I did um yeah I I bought a flat in Amsterdam and nice uh, I have five I have my home my place and um yeah definitely having also time to build personal life yeah and uh, I have so many friends and also from outside because um I mean I've always been very open-minded as I was saying I love my friends in the ballet but 
also still connected to the world and they always come to the shows and they are amazed by, by what we do and um and it's oh, also nice yeah exactly to just reconnect with exactly what you say the the normal the life we build and uh, i might also i'm actually not mine i'm also starting um masters mm-hmm. um a master's uh, in, in business what? management leadership and finances okay so <laughs> well european time i have i mean uh, i i love being busy <laughs> obviously and um yeah we do work a lot uh don't get me wrong especially as i'm doing a lot of things like last year i was also under study for the principal role in nutcracker so i am very busy um mm. and a bit everywhere in the but that that day off picture. that you've been that you filled in russia you're now filling with business studies exactly <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, it makes uh, sense. It makes sense. But look, you are um, an amazing woman, hard, like hardworking, persevering, um, you know, listens to her gut, gets what she wants. And I know we've joked and stuff, but it's all from your hard work, like 100%. Everything you have, like, is from all that hard work from basically from as soon as you started dancing around to music to now. And so... Yeah, I really admire you and it's it's honestly been um, a huge ple- pleasure for me getting to know you because, um, yeah, I really resonate with you and I also am just so happy for you after hearing your whole journey that you've now found your place and I can see you're probably going to stay there uh, a while and finally for you, no more packing. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, I just I just wish you like, everything you want all the happiness because I think you totally deserve that so thank you I want to say thank you so much Chloe for speaking with me today I want to say thank you so much also and uh, I love hearing um, your response I mean I think it's a very nice exchange and I would love to um, chat more with you and also yeah I listen to your podcast and stuff but um, having more your experience also and I think it's very uh, interesting and uh, I hope we get to meet uh, oh real. me too well Amsterdam is not very far away please come <laughs> <laughs> so we can definitely meet someday um, but yeah we can let's definitely have you back on the podcast again we can talk you know just about just about Russia for one of the episodes you know because I think yeah. we could talk a lot about that still there's a lot to say yes yeah uh, yeah magic, yeah Oh, thank you so much I follow also you on Instagram and I'm always liking your things and, oh uh, I know I'm liking your stuff <laughs> <it's> <laughs> no, thank you for the going. support yeah thank you so much and I look forward to meeting you in uh, in real life yes me too me too